Like, oh my god, this is Andrew Tate right in front of me. They just filmed one of the best podcasts with Andrew Tate. Um, right as Andrew Tate got arrested for, from like the UK. Yep. And he kind of predicted it in your video, if I'm not yep. mistaken. Yeah, he did, yep. yep. He said exactly what was going to happen. Yep. Raheem had to pay a billionaire to come on his podcast. It was such an awkward figure. It was... TikTok had to make new algorithms to make sure that he doesn't go viral again. Thank you for returning back to the show, the podcast where we discuss business, personal finance, happiness. Today I'm joined by none other than Raheem, Mr. CEO Cast, who has just arrived just a few days ago from Romania. And we're going to talk about everything, but Raheem is one of the biggest podcasters, especially when it comes to business podcasts, probably in the world. If not, like, I'm not sure there are many. Yeah. Probably, I mean, after like, you're probably top five in the world, business podcast, would you say? Oh, I'd, I'd like to say so. I mean, like, humbly speaking, yeah, I'd like to say yeah. so. I mean, I, I created the podcast because I couldn't find any business podcasts. Right. So you, I suppose if there was a business podcast out there, this podcast wouldn't exist. Were you so. the first one? I wasn't the first one, but when I was in my search for finding a business podcast, because I went on this whole wave of trying to listen to podcasts, and then I thought, okay, I want to listen to a business podcast, and I couldn't necessarily find one. So that's why I created it, basically, okay. to fill that gap. Right. Was Diary for CEO launched at the time? Not that I can remember, no. I didn't, didn't come across him. I came, I came across um, Stephen Bartlett, obviously. Yeah. He had his own separate channel, because I remember I saw uh, the first ever interview he'd done with Ben Francis, but that wasn't on Diary for CEO. Oh, okay. So I'm not going to say it came after. I'm not going to say it came before. I don't How know. How long ago was your first order. video? 2019, December. 2019, December. Yeah. Wow, he knows, the, he knows the exact date. Though. I know the exact date. I know the exact moment where I made the phone call to make that podcast happen and everything like that. And it was just history from there, man. I'm nice, there. nice. All right. So for those of you who haven't seen, Raheem has just uploaded an absolute banger for video. We have to talk about it. He just filmed one of the best podcasts with Andrew Tate. Um, right as Andrew Tate got arrested for, from like the UK. Yep. And he kind of predicted it in your video, if I'm not yep. mistaken. Yeah, he did, yep. yep. He said exactly what was going to happen. Yep. And that is insane. First of all, have you seen the photo of him coming out, like with the free, like, uh, top G? Yeah, and he's smiling, he's working at the smiling. camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what a you cool just got a rating guy. for that, 100%. He's a sick Every guy. Every photo of him, like, especially when he gets arrested, he always has the coolest photos. Yeah, there's, there's no mugshot. <laughs> he actually has got a good photographer. Whoever's taking them photos, I need that photographer as well, because they're making him look good. <laughs> yeah, honestly. That's true, actually. Yeah. So how was that trip, bro? Bro, that trip was incredible, man. Uh, we were only there for less than three days total, but that whole trip was non-stop, back-to-back, jam-packed events. Obviously, we had spoken to Andrew for like four hours. Um, by the time this podcast comes out, Tristan's one will probably be out as well, so we wow. had another two hours with Tristan. Go watch that out. Get, go watch also, that video, guys. It was a hectic day, bro, because I'm not sure if you would have seen or be able to tell from the podcast, but my voice had gone. I had, I'd woken up with a sore throat in Romania no that way. day. So the first thing I thought was, oh my God, how have I got the biggest podcast in the world and my throat's gone? And then Andrew's one, soldiered it through. Tristan's one, uh, you'll see it when it comes out, but my voice literally towards the end of it is just halas. Really? It's yeah. just gone fully. Um, so it <laughs> how was, long it was, was the Tristan one? Two hours? Tristan's one was two hours, yeah. So you filmed them both on the same day? Both on the same day. Back to back. Back to back, yeah. So I thought, That's tough. I thought I was going to get about at least an hour break between <laughs> Andrew's end and Tristan coming. Tristan and Andrew... They literally left and came at the same time. Wow. So Andrew left, Tristan come in. So oh, my whole idea of getting an hour break, that went out the window. Oh it was straight God. back to filming again. If you've ever tried filming a podcast, that is super difficult. Like, yeah. especially when you're, you know, with those, with that caliber. Yep. You get nervous, you know? Well, bro. And it's draining. It drains your yeah. brain. Because you're, People don't understand how difficult it is to do a podcast. At the same time, you're thinking of a million different things. You're thinking about how, you're thinking about what should I ask him? What should, should I, should I be, like, let me listen to his answer. Should I be thinking about my next question? Yeah, because you need to dissect the current answer while also thinking about the next question. There's yeah. so much to podcasts that people don't understand. And you're like, wait, this topic is boring. Or oh, we're still on this topic too long. Like, yeah, yeah, in yeah. my personal opinion, I think the Islam part, I think it's slightly dragged on mm. a bit longer, longer, but I love that topic. Yeah. But yeah, it was like the first 20 minutes of the video. And I, this is what I'm always thinking about. And you can't make the guest just change topic midway. You know, yeah, he has yeah, stuff you want exactly. to say on the topic. He's got to say what he's want to say. But you know, the reason why I wanted to talk about Islam highly is because. A, he's Muslim, and B, at the end of the last podcast, or on the first one, I gave him the Quran. Mm, so that was before his conversion. Yeah, so it was almost like a like a like a whole shift of at the end of that podcast, he was still a Christian, and now he's Muslim. So of course, I wanted to speak true, about true, it, true. and I had just come back from Umrah the week before that Romania trip. So naturally, you're always in the element of Islam, 
And so I thought it was only right to speak to him about it. And if he, I wanted to know if he had any questions about Islam for me, like to ask me, yeah. I wanted to be able to answer it. So we had sheikhs on standby ready to answer these calls. Wow, uh, really? To, huh? Yeah, to literally answer any questions. But he didn't, that, he didn't, he didn't. No, nah, he didn't. He, he's very, very, I'll give it to him. He's he very, very knowledgeable. And the amount of time that he's been a Muslim, he's read the Quran, he understands it, he dissects information. He knows things about the Quran that not many... He knows all the sex, know. he, knows he knows all the arguments. He knows all of it, do you know what I mean? So alhamdulillah for it and may Allah keep guiding him, but... He's a good guy, man. He's a good guy. Yeah. So it's crazy that you've asked Andrew multiple times to, like, in the, in, from what you've told me, a few times you asked him. But if I'm not mistaken, it was the time you asked him when you were in Umrah. At that time, you had written in your notes as well. You posted a photo on Instagram. Yeah. That was in your notes that you yep. said, ask Andrew Tate to do a podcast. Uh, get the Andrew Tate podcast done. Yep, yep. Yeah, and it was only the time when you asked him in Umrah did he say yes. Yeah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, bro. It was crazy. So someone told me, a previous guest, when you go to your next Umrah trip, write your list of duas. Previously, I hadn't done it. So when you're in front of the Kaaba, naturally you're like, okay, cool. What do I say? Because yeah. for anyone who hasn't been Umrah, when you go there, the second you go there, you'll forget about everything you're in mesmerized. your head. Literally. Um, so this time I was like, okay, cool. I'm, I'm gonna write a list. Wrote that list, made my duas, and. Lo and behold, God works in mysterious ways, yeah. miracles happen, and that podcast was booked there and then whilst I was on my Umrah trip. Mashallah. So, alhamdulillah, it was good, man. It was uh, amazing. Good one. Yeah. And it blew up, like it had one million views in like just four or five days. Yeah. Which is insane. Yeah, still insane growing. Yeah, still growing. Yeah. So, it's, it's been a good one. Yeah. So, uh, uh, exactly how does that message go? Like the message to Andrew, like, was it like a long paragraph? Obviously, you knew him because you had a first video with him a while ago. But like, well, how long was that paragraph? Was it like super convincing or just like, hey, bro, podcast? <laughs> that was literally what it was. When mm -hmm. I emailed him while I was in Saudi Arabia, it was literally just, hey, bro, I'm here in Saudi Arabia right now. I understand you can't go and leave Romania. So while I'm here in Saudi Arabia, firstly, do you want me to do any duas on your behalf nice. while I'm in the house of Allah? And secondly, let's line up this podcast. And he, I think he was thankful for the fact that I asked him about duas. And then secondly, he was like, cool. I'm free until the 20th of February. Let's do before then. In my head, I was like, cool, the second I'm back from Saudi Arabia, I'm coming. And it was literally like that. So I want to say the message must have been like five lines, if that. No paragraph, nothing like that. It was just, yo, G, what are you saying? But I guess because it was the, like the third time you had asked him, right? Yeah, yeah. So I previously asked him in December. He said to me. Was that like a long paragraph? No, that was just once again, it was because I had the connection with him. I didn't need to do a long paragraph or anything. Um, it's like me messaging you on Instagram and saying, yo, yeah, I'm yeah. going to record a podcast. And you're yeah. just like, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, obviously, if new people that you don't know, then you, you have probably to, have to yeah, write yeah. something. But with Andrew, first message I said to him was in December, yo, G, do you want to film a part two? Um, he said, message him in January, message him in January. He said, message him in February. And then in February, that's when I messaged him while I was in uh, Umrah. So it was a... Uh, Probably three months of what you could say chasing him down to get him on. And you, you did the shirt thing, which was pretty cool. Very yeah, yeah, smart yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering how he's going to react to it. I was wondering as well, to be <laughs> bro, fair, Because, be you know, when I, when I got the designs from the designer... It's like full on his logo, bro. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I was like, okay, I don't know what, what to do here. I just picked one because this is all like kind of last minute stuff. I just went with what looked the best out of those designs. We didn't have much time yeah, to design yeah. brand new thing and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So I just went with that. And it turns out he liked it. He liked it. Um, and I'm going to put it on for sale soon. When? Literally, hopefully... I wonder how it's going to sell. Say that again? I wonder how it's going to sell. Well, I'm only going to put it on sale so the money can... The, all the profits, 100% of it will go to charity. Oh, really? Inshallah. That's the plan. Oh, did you tell him that? I haven't told him that now, but... Oh, wow. You I'll should just, him. He'd be so happy. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll message him and all that sort of stuff. Um, but that's that's the plan. Oh, that's really you know, nice. Alhamdulillah, we we all make money in other ways. Yeah, at least this sponsors. way. Sponsors. Yeah, I don't sponsors. Want to talk about it. Say that again. Do you want to talk about the sponsors? We can't speak the figure, but we okay. can talk about the whole lineup and all that sort okay. of stuff. The um, figure is good, though. <laughs> Let me just say that. When you, when you have an Andrew Tate podcast, people want to jump on board. Alhamdulillah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. But nah, it's, it is interesting. So yeah, I thought you know what we've made our money this way. Yeah. The least we can do is make obviously portion of my money goes to charity regardless anyway but nice, this can yeah. be a direct source for charity so i thought you know what let's do that let's do nice that. nice nice so if you guys want one if this video is by the time this video is out it'll be in the description otherwise you can check out on Raheem socials i'm sure it'll be it's sick design it's like the chess piece with the cobra and yeah, yeah yeah with ceo cast with in front CEO of it as well. cast, exactly yeah it's all for a good cause nice 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 you know when i first filmed the video with andrew First of all, it's so surprising like how much of an audience he has. Like everywhere you go, people you notice you. Has mm -hmm. that happened to you since then? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Since that podcast dropped in Dubai, when I'm going in Dubai, more people are like, "You're the guy that filmed the podcast with Andrew Tate." I'll be in my hotel lobby. 
Sorry, bro, you you filmed a podcast with Andrew Tate, and um, it's funny because it's all different cultures. You get people from London, people from uh, you get Emiratis asking me Emiratis as well. Yeah, all these different types of people, all dif- all different nationalities, whether they're here on holiday, whether they live here, people are always asking, and it's re- that's the reason why Andrew Tate is so big and so famous, and also why it's so good for my brand as well because it makes my CEO cast now go global. Yes, and reach true. different levels. Yeah. Because now I can go to America and do a whole lot of podcasts there, leveraging Tate's name and people which you're know, doing. yeah, which I'm doing, inshallah, which will be planned. But people know Tate's name, so now it's the more likely to come on. So having someone like Tate is great for not only his brand but also your brand as well. And true. What I want to ask you is, what was your experience with uh, Andrew like? Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, the first time, I like I felt like he was so nice, like genuinely one of the most caring and courteous people I've ever met. Like really, like genuinely try to help me as much as he could, you know. Obviously, I tried to help him as much as he could when he came to Dubai. But at the end of the day, I, I provided for him some value in the beginning, but he could have still kept the value and not done my video, you know. Mm-hmm. But he came to do my video and, like, he came alone. The Bugatti trusted me. At that time, he couldn't release it straight away for some other reasons which he had. For the first so, podcast. Yeah, yeah, he couldn't release it straight away. Was that filmed here? Yeah, okay. not here, but uh, in Dubai. Yeah. And he didn't want me to release it for, like, a month after we filmed it. Oh, really? So you imagine, like, my, my situation. I was, like, dying. Yeah. But obviously, he had a very good reason. Um, but the point is that he trusted me. He's like, look, I'll film it with you in a month. And I was like, bro, I'm actually traveling to the UK to see my brother. He's like, all right, let's film it now. But I'll trust you to upload it. No contract, nothing. He's like, just, I, I trust your word. You know, he hadn't, hadn't yeah, even yeah, met yeah. me at the time. Yeah. And obviously, when I came to Romania, he hosted me in his house and took me around and gave me some sparring practice on my I channel. That, you know? yeah. So he really treated me like a younger brother and his advice stuff changed my life, you know. It's interesting, people always ask me like, how's Andrew in real life? And I don't really know what the answer is, like maybe you can help me answer this, but it's always like, he's the same person, he's exactly the same person, but he's also exactly very different. Like, That's the number one question we get. What's Andrew like in real life? What do you think? What, what I think he's like in real life? Yeah. I think he's the exact same, he's a G, easy to get along with, funny character. And someone who could just sit in the room, any room, and just get along with. You yeah, know what I mean, true. And uh, you know, well, it's almost like he can, he can, like he can be whoever you want him to be, like in a, in a yeah, room. Yeah, like, he's a stranger. He's, he's he very gets adaptable. Along strangers. Yeah, he's very Charismatic. adaptable. He's, he makes people feel comfortable in his presence. Yeah. Because some people can easily feel intimidated because they can be like, oh my god, this is Andrew Tate right in front of me. Yeah. But the second you meet him, you're like, oh, you know, it's cool, it's chilling, and all that sort of stuff. Especially women, the biggest feminists. The moment they meet him. They're like, wow, he's actually such a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. But I think the reason why, why why the Tates respect people like yourself here is because you're young and a hustler. Yeah. And I think they love young hustlers, people who are yeah. doing good things for the next generation, people for other youngsters to look up to you. Mm. And, you know, you're, you're following Tate's message, doing something. You're 21 years old, bro. Yeah. We're going to get into this podcast. We're going to get into this <laughs> more on my podcast, inshallah. But 21 years old, absolutely killing it. They Thank recognize you, that. They see that. And they're like, you know what? I'd love to have him in Romania. I'd love to talk to him. I'd love to chill with him. Yeah, yeah. And that's why they probably got all the time in the world for you, which is great, man. <laughs> nah, you're in a very you, good position. Thank you, bro. You're too, too nice. You're too nice. But honestly, like, yeah, like when I say like he's not the same person, what I mean is like some of his views like online, obviously like you don't get you don't go viral by saying the sky is blue and yeah, gossipy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes he kind of says outlandish shit, but he knows that he's he's poking. You know they say if someone makes you angry, they're your master. Yeah. So he knows how to. The Say trigger the, points. Yeah, yeah, you know, the more hate you, you hate him, the more comments, hate comments you leave, the more engagement the video gets and the more it blows up, of you know? Course, I, yeah. I think he understands that so well that he's able to some like say a lot of good points but like one or two wild points that lower your attention in and then you listen to him and you're like, wait, he has, he has some good logic, you know? Yeah. The so, way I see it is hate can either make you do two things. It can either make you quit because you can't take the hate or you can use the hate to your advantage and make it fuel you and just Give it back yeah, to all of exactly. them and you be- become viral, you become even more Momentum, famous than you already yeah. are. So Were you promoting crazy. the video on TikTok? Yeah. Well, this one? No, the, the Andrew video, you know, obviously Andrew goes viral on TikTok, but yeah. I had an issue like when I was posting Andrew. Yeah. He gets deleted so every video. When I had him on the first podcast, this is back in two, May 2022, it was fine. You can make it run. And that's probably how the, the videos podcast, went viral on TikTok. The videos went viral on TikTok and it was working, it was banging, it was beautiful. TikTok. Um, yeah, because that video now, that podcast is on almost 5 million views. Wow. Then I lost my account on that uh, because that's when TikTok were doing the whole crackdown and they everything. Did, on your, channel, your account? Delete the whole account. That account had 200,000 followers roughly. No way. So I was so annoyed because they'd just done everything for community violation, strike, blah, 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 bang, bang, bang. Video after video was gone. So whole TikTok. <laughs> but account. did they give you a warning or did they just remove the whole account? No, they just, so they gave me warnings per video. 
But because I posted so much Andrew Tate content, there was like 10 different warnings. At the same time? Yeah, same time. So they were like, cool, let's just get rid of this account. Go on. Um, now with this podcast, I can't do any TikTok promotion at all. And it's a shame because TikTok is one of the best things you can use to your advantage yeah. to make a podcast go viral. But in this case, I can't do that because they just literally take it down. I tested it on another TikTok account that I've got. Okay. It was just my face okay. of me talking to Andrew Tate and him saying one or two words. His face was not in it. Just his voice. Tick, yeah, just his voice. TikTok recognized that it was his voice and made a strike on that video as well. So no way. Literally, bro. They literally. could tell by his voice. They could tell by his voice. So he even wow. said this in my podcast. He was like, TikTok have had to make new algorithms to make sure that he doesn't go viral again. So they know his voice. They know his face. They know everything about him. But how do they know a- the voice? The power of AI. Because you it. think like when you're in a conversation with someone like there's different sounds, it's like an audio track. How through all that different mufflings or different audio recordings are yeah. they tracking that small voice, you know? Literally, bro. They're tracking and like, everything. If I, if I do like an Andrew accent right now, would my TikTok get like, if I'm like, probably. Bugatti, yeah, probably where's my Bugatti? Yeah, 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 yeah. Would they remove so this? So it's funny because me, me and the team, we were sitting back after this podcast. We were like, okay, cool. How are we going to distribute and market this podcast? Because we can't do it on TikTok. Yeah. And one of the guys said, uh, my sound engineer, he was like, okay, what if we just change the pitch of the voice, make it deeper or higher? So I was thinking, okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to be like, oh, the Matrix is after me. <laughs> yeah, one of them was just like, you can't do that. Matrix. Yeah. So yeah, man, it's, it's crazy what TikTok have done, man. Damn. It's crazy what they've done. Yeah, but they really try to shadow him because they know like his message is far. I don't know uh, exactly what's their reason because they're not even from USA, you know? But do you know what I find absolutely crazy about all of this, yeah? And it ties into what Tate says all the time, yeah? The fact that Tate, someone who spreads positive message, gets banned off TikTok completely. But then you have the most disgusting, filth, vile behavior on TikTok going on. And TikTok promote that. TikTok boosts that. If you have a girl who's not so modest on there, you know, that post is going viral. Yeah. Those sort of things. And it's just like, you know what? They really do want to show you what agenda they're trying to go down in the future. Yeah. Uh, so we need to stand by yeah. the message of, you know, alongside Tate. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. It's crazy that they got banned on all the platforms at the same time. Like they must have spoken to each other. Yeah, yeah, they did. 100%. Because 100%. exactly the same time, everything together. Instagram, TikTok, one by one. Exactly. Tate was even time. saying his Uber account shut down. <laughs> you know, poor, poor guy can't even get Uber Eats to his house anymore. Do you know what I mean? That's um, crazy. But why? I don't understand why Uber would do that, though. But yeah, anyways. They all done it. All, all of them. I think he said banks as well. Um, Maybe they all have one system. They do. They're all under one control. Do you know what I mean? One old order. Yeah. That's the thing, bro. That's the scary thing. Yeah. Anyways, um, well, a few questions about you, Raheem, then, personally. Yeah. Enough about Andrew. Although it was a crazy video, you guys have to check it out. Uh, blew up. Uh, do you have any advice for any young podcasters who are just starting out trying to make a podcast? So here's, here's the advice I used to think about all the time when I used to see podcasters popping mm. up all over TikTok and stuff, yeah? Yeah. A lot of these podcasters go broke. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you the reason why is because they don't know how to do anything themselves. In a sense of, I'm sure when you first started out, you were recording and everything yourself, right? Yeah, editing. Same with, same with me, editing, all of that. Now, what I'm seeing nowadays is people who are just starting podcasts, they're recording, they're, they're hiring camera guys, they're hiring microphone guys, they're hiring editors, they're hiring all of this. They haven't made, made a single penny yet and the podcast goes broke, which then means eventually they're going to stop the podcast because they're losing out on, in their money, right? So my advice would be, if you're starting a podcast or something, learn every single skill that you can while you can until mm-hmm. you start making some good enough money where you can pay other people mm-hmm. to do so. Um, I still do all my stuff to this day, not because of financial reasons, just A, because I enjoy it, and B... But you, don't, you edit yourself? Yeah, I edit myself, yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 edit myself. The only thing I don't do now is TikTok clips and, and the podcast trailers. Uh, because they're but the Andrew Tate video you had a you had a company do it right yeah yeah so shout out to Blood Brother Media they basically came in and stepped up the whole production and all that sort of stuff so, so now you don't edit yourself for that one for the Tate's one I didn't for the other ones I still do that's crazy though yeah. that you still edit yourself but the editing is easy this one I saying, find because it I have so that. annoying I hate it bro it, editing a podcast I despise editing bro how, when how I have lo- to edit I'm like oh my god how long so did it take annoying. you to edit a podcast ages. Like three, four days, five. No, more, more, maybe. What was you doing wrong? I, bro, I, don't, <laughs> I hate what. Like, first of all, I even let alone editing. I can't even watch the video again. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I struggle just to sit down and watch it again. Like I don't struggle. It's just like I procrastinate because I just feel like it's so tedious to like watch each clip and I, like. I get you. I get you. I'm a bit <laughs> of a perfectionist as well in a sense that I have to make sure things are done the way I want it to be done. I know, so the I know. exact I camera used to have that angle. issue, but now I'm like, I delegate, I trust the team. Yeah. I don't even watch. I watch the intro after I don't watch the video. And I don't cut anything. I've had you a cut team. Stuff in the video? I've had a couple of editors before in the past 
But I've always watched back to the edits and I'm like, nah, like this isn't how I would do it. And they could never pick up on the way that I'd want to do it. Um, not to say there isn't someone out there, but in my experience from the people I've had, it hasn't worked out for the best of favours for myself. Yeah. So I've always just ended up editing. But now, bro, edit, t- t- edit a podcast for me now takes five minutes. Really? Five minutes for the whole thing. Autopod. <laughs> Have you seen it? That application. Actually works? Yeah, it does the whole thing. I'll send that off to an editor. They make the trailer. I'll get the trailer back. Done. Put a sponsor video in it. Done. Make nice. the thumbnail. Done. The whole nice. podcast for me to edit. But you're talking about out. investment. Although the issue is when it comes to recording the mics and the cameras, you can't, no matter how much you want to do yourself, you can't get good quality. You have to rent it. You know what I mean? Like to get good quality. Not necessarily. I mean, you got to film on a phone. It's not going to work. Oh, no, no. Okay. No, you have to invest in the cameras and everything. Yeah, of yeah. course. So you have invested in cameras, the cameras or you invest in a videographer. But yeah. this way, at least you can say you're, you've got assets, you can always get rid of these cameras for the same price that you got it for. True. So yeah. if things didn't go well, at least you've got some money to fall back on. Like these cameras in the room right now, it's probably about 10, 15 grand. Yeah. If I wanted to stop my podcast tomorrow, I'll sell, sell everything. Sell them same price. Yeah, sell them same price. I'll make back 15, 20 grand. But if you stop the podcast and you've got a video videographer who's got their own cameras, you've got nothing. Or what advice we have about the actual content itself then, or like getting the guests, or do you think it's mainly about content? What's the main struggle? Getting the guests? I think the main struggle, the bigger you get with the podcast, the, your biggest struggle is going to be getting the right guests on. You can get any guest on you want. Anyone who says, yeah, I want to come on your podcast, but how much of the brand do you want to water down or do you want to keep it to top level people? So this is, as I was saying to you before off camera, my issue now is, you know, I've had Andrew Tate on, and Tristan Tate on. Now people were expecting people Twice. to be above that or on the same level. But realistically, that's not really possible. So They're the biggest have podcast guest in the world. Andrew's the biggest podcast guest in the world. That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> for me, my biggest problem at the moment is coming up with the right guests, right people that actually the audience want to watch and the audience want to see. And I feel like at this point right now, that's in America. So I'm going there for that. And Who's then your dream podcast guest, guest if you could have any guests in the world? At the moment, Alex Omozi. Really? Yeah. I've been studying him for the past month and I'm just like, yeah, this guy's sick. I like what he's I've doing. I've been watching like him for years. Yeah. Although he wouldn't be my dream guest. I would love to have him on, mm. but my dream would be like someone like Elon Musk. Or okay, yeah, no, dream guest. Putin yeah, Trump, or Trump. Or yeah, Trump. Yeah, 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 dream guest like that. I'd say dream acquirable reality guest. Yeah. What about dream? Like if you could dream. And ah, dream. No limits. Dream, no limits. One guest. Kanye West or Joe Rogan. Or Mr. Why am I speaking to Joe Rogan? Because... I want to know what he'd done to get that Spotify deal. <laughs> 100 M's. 100, 250 M's, bro. It's 250 M's? It went from 100 M's last year. This year, it's 250 M's. And his podcast is allowed to be on all platforms. No So way. before, it was 100 M's just for Spotify. Spotify have said, okay, we're going to give you 250, but feel free to upload on YouTube, no TikTok, way. Twitter. 250 what? 250 M's. million. And I was like, okay, cool. I need that formula. So I wouldn't mind speaking to Joe Rogan. So um, he'd be the number one. No, you can't say I wouldn't mind. We need one name, bro. Don't okay. be, uh, I number mind. one. Number one, I'm going to go Joe Rogan. Number right, one, I'm going right, to go Joe Rogan. Right. Just because he's in the field that I'm doing and I want to know exactly how to make that but money. But he's a great interviewer. Yeah. But maybe if you interview him, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, might be. He'll just start interviewing you. Have you ever had that? Have you ever had a dream guest where you've always wanted to have one and then you sat down with them and thinking, oh my God, this person's doing my head in. I can't get information out of him. Yeah. Everyone has. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like one of those situations where like, see, people... Usually, they go into autopilot, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, like, especially if they're done a few podcasts, oh, they go into yeah. the same script which they I always go into. I hate that. I've had that a couple of times. Even I've with had, Andrew, like, yeah. if you ask him certain questions, he will repeat the same answer. Oh, so yeah, nothing that. against Andrew, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he will repeat the same thing, because yeah. that's, that's his... It's, it's obviously when you have three cameras on you and lights that are blaring your face. No, but okay, his, his is different in a sense of that's the point he loves to get across and that's in his head. It's not scripted, it's just messages that he has in his head. Yeah, but also when you, when you have a good answer for something and you know like it's risky to try a new yeah. answer yeah, or like try to yeah. think out loud, yeah, yeah, yeah. you may stutter, yeah. you may not know your point, you may not be able to articulate it exactly how you want, so it's very easy to just go back to your usual set yeah. of answers. You know? Well, there are guests that I've seen that have word for word the exact same story <laughs> on different podcasts <laughs> and that's how you know when it's a PR run yeah. when they're just saying the same thing regurgitate information the same emotion same exact wording all of it and I'm just like oh, do I want to have you on my podcast you're just going to repeat the exact same what's thing what's the worst guest situation you had but you don't have to mention the name of the guest the worst guest situation yeah but you don't have to mention the name oh you told me this is a funny story Raheem he had a billionaire on his podcast oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this is the only guest he's ever had to pay to come yep Raheem had to pay a billionaire to come on his podcast. Yeah. Which I didn't understand. 
because it was such an awkward figure. It was seven hundred and fifty pound equivalent, <laughs> equivalent of what's that in dirhams? About three, three and a half thousand dirhams, roughly. Seven hundred and fifty like pounds for a billionaire to come. Yeah. Unlimited time. <laughs> Unlimited time. It didn't make no sense because you're a billionaire. If you're going to charge me, then charge me the full whack. What a billionaire would. Ten grand for the podcast. Cool. And we'll one hour, happen. I have a meeting after. I yeah, can't yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Something like, come on, Andrew Tate Flex. Yeah, because if he's going to charge, that's what the uh, deal is going to be. But the thing is, it was such a low rate where it's like, you might as well do it for free. I don't know what the 750 <laughs> figure is all about. What is he going to do with it? What's he going to do with 750 pounds? I think it was just more of principle to say, okay, I'm a billionaire. I can charge my time. Understandably, but 750 pounds for unlimited amount of time didn't make no I sense I wish you just kept him there the whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah literally, and he'd be like, no, we signed a contract. You yeah, can't yeah, leave. Yeah, bro, yeah, it was mad. Yeah, yeah, there was a contract signed as well, but I was just like, I don't even know what's going on here. Contract uh, yeah. and all this. And the podcast didn't do the greatest cyber, but I mean... That was the Gypsy King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, Gypsy King's Tyson Fury, bro. Huh? <laughs> Gypsy King's Tyson Fury. What? Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the Gypsy Billionaire. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gypsy Billionaire, Gypsy Billionaire. Shout out Alfie Best Jr. <laughs> He's a good guy, great guy. But it just didn't make, didn't make sense to me. Yeah. He's a good guy, great guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's I want very, very knowledgeable as well. <laughs> but if you would take the 750 pound back. Say that again? You'd take the 750 pound back, like in hindsight. Or like, yeah, if yeah. you saw him, you'd tell him, like, bro. Yeah, I'll be like, bro, come on, bro. Like, you didn't need the £750. <laughs> what did you use it for? The fuel for your helicopter? I'll take that back, you know. <laughs> so, is he actually a billionaire? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's a billionaire. Um, in asset-wise, I'll say so, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. He's got Crazy. a lot of mobile home parks. Do you think that people come on podcasts and they just lie sometimes? Like, sometimes I've sat with some podcast guests, sorry, some guests from my podcast, and I feel like they've definitely just said some wild lies. Do you know what? There are some <laughs> podcast guests that I've seen that do come on and exaggerate their story or exaggerate their revenue or exaggerate their lifestyle. Yeah. And I think... Like, do they talk about driving Lamborghinis and they pull up like, you know... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's because they're, so, they're selling something, mm. right? And the more they exaggerate the lifestyle, the more the, the audience is going to buy into their lifestyle and purchase their yes. course or their... Exactly. Yeah. Whatever it is, their money, the money's going to go back to them somehow. Yeah. So I could sit here on this podcast right now and tell you, Ahmed, I'm a multi-millionaire from this podcast. I'm driving around Dubai in a Lamborghini, blah, 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 blah. That's not the reality of it, though. Yeah, but I true. could lie to it. If I had a podcast course, it would go great because now other people are going to buy my podcast course and want to yeah, do the same yeah. thing. So I think it's just a case of that, of, you know... And they, it's they inelastic demand. Like, Lex, like, I don't know if you know, what's Coffeezilla was talking about some Lex Friedman's yeah. interview. Super interesting point, which he said was, what's the difference between a company like Nissan who says drive your cars it'll make you happy and the car driving the car doesn't make you happy mm. what's the difference between that or for example saying that buy my course it's gonna make you money mm. it's all marketing at the end of the day everyone yeah. does it yeah. Red Bull says they give you wings so he's like what's the difference so he's like there's a very clear difference something called inelastic demand so obviously some items in life they have elastic demand and some of them have inelastic demand so like a Nissan or a car there's only, a, especially a Nissan, there's only a certain amount of money you'd be willing to pay for it. If someone said pay $1 billion for a Nissan, you're going to say no. I mean, unless it's like a, a GTR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Expect that GTR. Yeah. The point is, most of the time you'd say no. So it has elastic demand. But something like getting rich or making money has inelastic demand because some people, are, that situations are so desperate that they'd give away everything which they have to make, let's say, double or yeah. triple, you know? Mm. So there's infinite amount of desire in this world, infinite amount of need, want. So, sorry, want, infinite amount of want, you know? So these people, when they get an offer for, like, to make more money, they will always spend what they have to make more. And as much as they had, they'd spend, if they were even, if they had 5 million, they may spend 5 million to make 10 million, mm. you know? There's never an amount they wouldn't spend to make, to make double, right? It's, Is there any yeah. amount you wouldn't give to, give do to get double? Yeah, of course, of course. But it's sad at the same time because... You've got some people in the world who have no money at all and they see this person who's selling a course for like £500, £1,000, whatever and whatever the money they've saved up, whatever they ask their mum and dad, yeah, give it to them and eventually they get scammed. So it's, it's sad in that sense because you're just doing that people like that. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. What's the most amount of money you'd spend knowing that you're going to get double or hoping that you're going to get double? There's hoping a 50-50 chance. 50-50? <laughs> yeah, but if it's a gamble, I wouldn't do it, right? Because gambling's haram. Okay, but let's just say... say it's a halal investment? Yeah. What about like crypto, crypto then? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, uh, if it's 50 50, completely 50 50, mm -hmm. flip on coin. Yeah. There's no way of researching to know more, to make it more. Because with crypto, I'd argue there is. But let's say it's a 50 50. But crypto, up. everyone can research as much as they want, but no one knows what the market's actually doing. Do you know what I mean? So, for example, Bitcoin right now, as it stands, is on 50 grand, I believe. 
Now, the speculation that it's going to go to 100 grand. But there's information about it. There's the half thing that's coming up. Of course, but even then, can you confirm 100% that it's going to go to the no, 100 grand? No, nothing is guaranteed. You can't confirm anything. Yeah. But you can look at the past, you know, and history doesn't always repeat itself, but it rhymes, you know, and you can see like the last f- four halfings mm-hmm. or three halfings. Every time the, the, the halfing happens, all the circulating supply or all the, all the, all the Bitcoin that can be mined gets yeah, yeah, halved. Yeah. So, you know, supply, demand, demand. So what's, what's the most so amount of money you put in then? In crypto? Not in crypto. In an investment that, you know, it's a 50-50. I have like, quite a lot of money in crypto. I have like six figures in crypto. Really? Yeah. Mashallah. Like it's built up to six figures or you've put in six figures? Good question. I've put in, um, uh, it's built up to six figures. It's, it's, now, it's now almost, um, it's now 40% more than what it was. But I've been doing trading as well. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> forex trading? No. No, crypto trading. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I don't know forex trading. No. <laughs> Gosh, oh my God. Of course, hasn't he? Of course he has. <laughs> no, no. No forex trading. Bro. Yeah. But crypto trading, but no, not, nothing online, just my personal, like, I wouldn't reveal it because I don't want someone to lose money based on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my personal, like, every time there's, like, a 20% dump, I put, like, 20 in Dogecoin, 20 US, <laughs> becomes, like, 30 the next day, yeah, sell yeah, it yeah. again. But I'm not, I'm not holding. Last, last bull market, I made the mistake of holding and diamond hands and all this bullshit yeah, yeah, they yeah, fed yeah. to I'm me. I'm not holding either. Literally, yeah. as soon as it goes up, halving period and all that, when I see it peak, I'm going to make sure that I'm not greedy and you're saying up. that now it's already peaked a few times so you may as well it's peaked a few times yeah, I'm sure I've already sold a few times yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, I haven't sold a few times yet <laughs> not yet but it hasn't come, the half and period hasn't happened yet so yeah. I'm going to wait for that then the but peak but the half and period is like a buy the rumor sell the news type event you know Yeah. Like everyone's talking about it and yeah. then the moment the half and comes everyone just sells <laughs> yeah then it's, then it's peak yeah, then, it, then, it, then it's different but I don't think people will I don't think yeah. people will sell their bitcoin especially knowing that it's half pretty much so anyways Raheem, it was a pleasure having you on no board. thank you thank you I appreciate you having me on man yeah, it was a pleasure. I think we've got to do this know. again properly. 100% Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Full, a, full, a full version. Let me get to your level time. and then, then no, I can come bro, back on. I feel like me, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm having, what's the word? Imposter syndrome right nah. now. Being in the seat where I don't belong <laughs> on your podcast. This big podcast. Nah, I wish bro, like, bro. I need to be on your levels. Bro, inshallah. you're messing around. Bro. This yeah. is the number one podcast. Raheem, see your cast. <laughs> no, that's you, mate. That's you. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you for watching. All the best. See you. Peace.